My name is Chris, I'm from Kombucha.com, and we're a Vancouver-based company that specializes in kombucha homebrew starter kits and accessories. And throughout this video, we're going to be showing you how to make kombucha in a 4 liter jar, just like this one. There's three great benefits of drinking kombucha, and there's plenty of them, but the three main ones are it's got high, high levels of probiotics. Uh, number two, it's low in sugar, which is a great substitute for people that like to drink soda. It's also carbonated, and it's got caffeine. So if you want that extra kick either in the morning or in the afternoon after lunch, it's a great way to get your afternoon boost. So today we got the two liter and four liter kit from brewyabucha.com. And inside these kits, we have everything to make kombucha. And today we're going to be featuring the four liter kit, which is right here. And after here for the two liter kit, everything, all the processes are just the same. It's just in a smaller jar. I have the 4 liter kit right here and I'm going to be showing you what's inside. So we have the detailed instructions for the 4 liter kit right here, including our jar and lid and our temperature strip two pre-packed bags of sugar, as well as tea, enough for two full four liter jars of kombucha. We have our cloth cover, a rubber band, as well as our uh, disposable tea bags. We have our pipe straw, our strainer, as well as our SCOBY. That's all you get in the four liter kit. So to begin the first fermentation process for our kombucha, we're going to need to make sweet tea. We're going to need two liters of cold filtered water, as well as two liters of boiled filtered water. You can either boil it on the stove, or you can boil it in a hot water boiler, similar to this one. So in each kit, there'll be a two prepackaged bags of sugar, as well as tea. So in each bag of tea, we'll be able to make four liters of kombucha. So we begin with taking our tea and placing it into the tea bag. We recommend using a toothpick to thread the top of the bag, so therefore all the tea stays inside your tea bag before you discard it. So somebody just take a toothpick and then thread it through the top. Just like that. And we'll have a newly folded bag of tea. And then we'll place that aside. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place two liters of boiling water into our brew jar. So we've already pre-measured it in this water boiler. And then we'll just toss our bag of tea into there and then it'll steep for 8 to 10 minutes. Now we're going to take our sugar and put it into the jar and stir it around to make the remainder part of our sweet tea. your tea has been brewing for 8 to 10 minutes, we're going to remove the tea bag just by using either a wooden spoon or a fork and just try to push out as much of the tea as you possibly can. You want to try to see it as much as possible. After we remove your tea bag, we're now going to put some filtered cold water into the sweet tea to make sure that it cools down. So now we're only going to put it up to about 3 inches from the top of the neck. So you may not need all of the cold water that you have available. After we've added the cold filtered water to our sweet tea, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the temperature on the side indicates a temperature of roughly around 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. We try to aim anywhere around 26 to 27 to ensure that the scoby doesn't get burned in the process of adding it to the next step. Keep an eye on our brew and what we've done to speed up the process of cooling it down to the proper temperature, which is roughly around 27 uh, to 28 degrees Celsius, uh, we put it, our jar of uh, freshly brewed uh, sweet tea into the fridge. You can leave it out on the counter to let it cool, but it may take a little bit longer. But as you can see, the temperature gauge indicates that it's 28 degrees Celsius and 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's an ideal temperature range. Now that we've had our sweet tea at the proper temperature, what we're going to do is open up our SCOBY. 
Inside the package is one cup of star fluid as well as a SCOBY, and you'll need the star fluid to be put into the uh, start sweet tea to kickstart the fermentation process. If you happen to pour it out beforehand, what you can do is actually use white vinegar as a substitute. So now we're going to coat up our SCOBY and add it to our sweet tea. After we've put our SCOBY and starter fluid into our sweet tea, what we're going to do is actually use the cloth that's included in your kit and cover your brew to ensure that there's proper airflow as well as no other contaminants can get inside your brew. It also adds a great look to your completed Gucci kit. As you can see in our jar, the SCOBY is floating at the top. Uh, in, some, in some circumstances, the SCOBY will sink to the bottom, but under those circumstances, it's still a healthy SCOBY. So whether it's at the top or the bottom of your jar, you're still good to go, and it should still be fermenting your sweet tea. The final step in our first fermentation process is now to let your SCOBY get to work. I placed our brew in a closet, which is warm and dry, as well as it won't get disturbed. The ideal t temperature is to be at room temperature, which would be around 23 to 28 degrees Celsius. Now you can just leave it in here for 7 to 10 days, and then if it's at the higher range, uh, maybe 28 degrees throughout the entire process, uh, you can probably test it within 7 days and your brew may be wet ready. If it's not, then you just leave it for a couple more days and test it again. Now that you've left your SCOBY, uh, you should just let it do its thing and close the light and not disturb it for the next 7 days. Welcome back, it's been eight days since we put our brew jar into the closet, and now it's the perfect time to taste it. Um, you don't want to wait too long to taste it because it may be a little bit too, more, too tart for your, your taste and preference, but I'm going to taste mine now and see where we're at. And uh, our brew's perfect right now. Um, I like mine to be uh, slightly tart, but at the same time still a little bit sweet. Um, if you like yours to be more tart, then you have to leave it a couple more days for the fermentation process to continue. But if you like yours to be sweet, you can always take it a couple days uh, early. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do with our, our brew is now we're going to bottle it, and that will be part of the second fermentation process. Pretty much concludes the first fermentation process. Uh, we now have raw kombucha. And we're going to be moving to the second fermentation process where your kombucha will start getting its fizziness that you're used to in uh, kombucha that you buy at the store. And you'll be able to customize your brew based on the flavors that you want, uh, either adding fruits or uh, other flavors. And uh, we'll also be bot bottling as well. So in, follow us in another video for the second fermentation process.